Previously on the Stanley Parable. And then it resumes. Okay, here we are back at the stairs. This time we're gonna go up. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Wow, this looks really fancy. I'd want an office like this. Maybe with a little more lighting, because this does look kind of creepy, but hey. Looks nice and cozy, I suppose. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons <laughs> on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. We got here. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Everything is so freaking dark. Wish I could see what I'm going and where I'm, what I'm doing. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Did I? Or did I go this way? I think we know the answer to that. Escape. Yes, let's get out of here. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Eh, I don't think so. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. He did, but I doubt it happened. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. of what this movie is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Oh, God. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Wait, what? I'm still alive. Uh, 
the Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Hmm. So this is a killing game where everyone dies. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. The corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. Oh, okay, so this is like how the game starts, so you go through here. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Pretty much, yeah. And it all goes to uh, these two doors. And anything else we can learn about this? The set of two doors opens... Uh, uh, the set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> Button sounds. Where's the 8 button? <laughs> That's my favorite button. Let's see. <gasps> solitaire! No, I wanted to play Solitaire. Let's just turn all the computers off. Wait. Hey, no, 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 no. Turn you about. No. Or is it just sleep mode? Or yeah, it's just sleep mode. Okay, never mind. Uh, is that it? Or can we do anything else? So let's go this way. office maintenance room oh so this is like kind of a credit sequence I guess more endings fewer endings more narrators fewer narrators more Stanley less Stanley okay The lounge. The office. <laughs> yep, I remember that. The Zending. The game is now paused. Hey, look, I paused the game. Let's see, there's the monitor room elevator. Have we even experienced all the endings? I doubt it. Well, there's the exits. Do you want to go there yet, or... Yeah, I have a feeling you probably just want to go there and get out of this. Okay. This is pretty cool, though. You get to see a lot of information about the game and how it was built and whatnot. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see?
Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Bring the other guy back. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. Yay! We tied! Can we continue, or...? I think I have to actually uh, begin the game here. I'll wait a few minutes, and if something comes up, uh, I'll just continue. If not, um, I'll see you for another choice. <laughs> This was the keypad number, wasn't it? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yep. Stanley simply began entering random 2845. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, <laughs> and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Hold on. Well, too late. We already got it open, I guess. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I suppose he did. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Sure, why not? Uh, can we continue, or...? Oh, I guess we can. Now the monitors jump to life their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Creepy. Also, if you look uh, in a certain place, I believe that's where actually that one ending came from. <laughs> kind of cool how they kind of intertwine a little bit. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Probably. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? 
Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I wouldn't put it past him. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Uh, what if I refuse? Okay, yeah, I'll refuse. Why not? Five. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you tried to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the oh, no. emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say, um, two minutes. No, I don't want to die! Ah, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stan? Oh, no! It's more time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your <laughs> heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. No! I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated. <laughs> all right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. Oh I have to God, say this, no. though, this version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything <laughs> and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stan. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be no, doing? No, I right don't. Now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? <laughs> I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. Whoa. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. 
It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. Okay, this is three. not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first. So no. you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No end here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it come. Or don't. It's all the same to me. Uh, all a part of the joke. No! And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Oh god, no. Oh no, no. Oh god, no. And that's it. Damn you! Ah, oh, this game, man.